Aquarius. Hello Aquarius and this is your May forecast for 2013 and we're looking at what's happening and taking place for you here this month. Now last month for you there was just a whole lot of things going on here in your third house communication maybe short trips back and forth and papers documents catching up and just being on the phone or on doing texts a whole lot just busy busy so right now this month it's going to kind of slow you down a little bit okay it's more coming back into essence into being into who you are spiritually with your roots okay so the past and family may be become very important to you you know and the essence of who you are through reflected through your family lineage or it could also be your lineage from the country that you're from maybe those things are going to really kind of come up and and do something with you here you might even also be tapping into the Kashic records of past lives I mean now we're really talking like way past and I'm saying this because it's not always that we get this incredible focused power as we do here as you are having in the fourth house right now and yes you know some of you Aquarians are very open-minded and uh, open to reincarnation open to spirituality thinking outside of the box I mean you are those who uh, give us a lot of your unconventionality um, so you're the forerunners there and then we have the uh, the other split half of the Aquarians which are thinking only in very scientific uh, avenues and will have nothing to do with metaphysics or spirituality or past lives because they can't prove it uh, so but but for you, those of you who are open you are the forerunners for the rest of us and I think this month would be a great time for you to, to do some past life regressions if you so choose or and do it with a partner by all means why because you have Venus and Mars here so you and your partner are really close here this month wanting to uh, dwell into those deeper aspects uh, wanting to know who she he or she was in a past life get more details on that so you can understand your relationship here in this incarnation that much more when you get the fuller picture or it may be he or she that's very curious about who you were and represented you know as lessons in this person's life in the past so those things I think could be really good very healing for you uh, on a more practical day-to-day -day basis well you might be fixing your home this uh, month uh, changing it moving perhaps uh, wanting a little bit larger space I mean that's been calling you here ever since last year so you might not have have had the chance to create the move before now and you're catching up um, and I'd say whatever you can do here in May Aquarius will really allow you to take a little time off next month because all of these planets here now they're going to be moving into the fifth house of love and romance and uh, you've got a lot to look forward to there it's leisure time here in June for you uh, so you can take uh, time to do hobbies or start something creative project or many of you who are single will be perhaps finding new love here next month so this month is all about getting it together okay getting that whole package together and you like to work a little structured anyway at times so right now the challenge for you may be very much so what's happening at home what's happening in your career it's feeling a little stretched because all the planets are in Taurus and then you got Saturn up here in the 10th house for career and it's calling your attention wanting you to focus needing your time so many of you might be feeling that you're having to do this balance between home and career when you're home you're guilty that you're not there following up and working but when you're at work you're feeling guilty of those at home and you would love to have spent more time with them so don't do that to yourself because either way you're going to be ending up feeling guilty that pressure is no good it's not healing 
and it's not um, creating anything of any value that you can take anyway. So I would suggest for you this month is be present, be in the now. When you're home, enjoy it to the max. Love every single minute. Don't even think about work. Now, when you go to work, do not think about those at home, okay? Because that's taking care of itself. Being guilty is just wasting. And this is all about learning how we can master our energies without depletion. And so at work, I want you to focus fully there, do a great job, and as soon as you leave that door, you're on your way home. This is how you're going to be balancing this extreme opposition here this month, though. But then, it's all good. We have the new moon, new intentions coming in here on the 9th, and we have a super new moon. It's an eclipse. We don't really get that many new moon eclipses, and what's really interesting about it is that it's conjunct with Mercury, so it's going to give it even more power. And at the same day on the 9th, Venus is going to move out of your fourth house into the fifth house of true love and creativity and, and so forth. So this new moon here has a lot of motion and flexibility to create more than usual. A new moon like this, Eclipse is going to have the power of 10 new moons. And since it's with Mercury, and I was just saying this on the relationship forecasts too that are downloadable, that you should communicate this with your partner. Um, normally we take our new moon rituals on the inside and we take a, do a little meditation and we have our own inner vision board. Some of you create a real vision board of your intentions that you set out. But since Mercury is there, it's like it's telling me that communicate it to your partner because if you're not telling him or her what it is, that's important to you, how you visualize what you're trying to achieve, how will they know? They're not telepathic. And of course, your partners are equally as um, geared towards wanting to make you happy as you try to make him or her happy as well, right? When you know what they're thinking, what they like, what do you do? You try to create that for them. So if you're not expressing this, and I'm saying, talking about likes and dislikes because we're in the sign of Taurus, and Taurus is all about, you know, a little bit black and white. I like this, I hate that. I like this, I don't like that. So it's like, this is a time to share that so they can get a little bit more insight here with you. Um, then just watch what's going to happen. You might see some instantaneous uh, feedback on that or payback on that already on the 18th uh, where you're going to be receiving some kind of surprise from somewhere. Uh, for you, it's between your fourth house and also, um, oh, yeah, your fourth house. Well, Venus has already moved into your fifth house. So it's, it's going to be a communication. Something, something's going to be said from either your partner, your loved one. Uh, it could be also a creative project coming in, which will be bestowed upon you. And just like out of the blue there, and it might just tie into those new moon intentions that you did have, because here it comes. And then when Venus is moving in here to the fifth house, it's going to be partnering up with Jupiter. And you know how Jupiter is makes everything expansive. It, 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 whatever it touches, it just grows it humongously. And with Venus there, that's love. So you might just feel here towards the end of the month that things are really picking up. Uh, I'd say even uh, from the ninth, you will start seeing that you're wanting to pull back, wanting to more time to be with your loved one, to take time off for relaxation. It could even be an early vacation for some of you Aquarians. And Jupiter will make sure that you're going to have a lot of fun doing so. Um, so. So find what you're passionate about, you know, and, and play with it. Uh, it's in the fifth house of Leo, so that inner child that you have wants to come out and play. And the beauty is, is that Mars is going to be following right behind it. Uh, and this would be your significant other coming in here on the 30th, following right in behind it into the fifth house. So you can uh, expect that the forecast of June is going to be really, really fun, up and running, providing a lot of details of how you can make the most of it here next month. 
But yeah, so the eclipse on the 24th, we have a full moon eclipse. Um, full moons will always give us, you know, uh, we harvest from the intentions we have put out earlier in the month. And like I said, on this new moon, you can harvest here uh, 14 days later on the 24th. You will probably see a lot of that come towards you. But since it is a full moon eclipse, uh, these spiritual trash cans, I call it that, cosmic trash cans, because they're good. They help us get rid of old things that we need to cut out, the dead weight of our life, which at times can be very difficult for many of us would kind of cling and hang on to. But when we let go of old circumstances, people, places, outgrown habits and whatnot, when we clear that out, we allow, you know, room, new room for new things to fill us, new places, new people, circumstances and so forth. So I would say for this full moon eclipse, how you could use it to the max and get the most out of it would be kind of contemplating throughout the month. What do you need to let go of, you know? And find those people that you no longer have any connection with, anybody you're harnessing any kind of resentments towards and haven't forgiven. Use this eclipse to get rid of it. And I know, I hear a lot of clients, I hear you guys talking to me and say, he doesn't, he doesn't deserve to be forgiven or she doesn't deserve to be forgiven. It's not about them and what they did, whether they deserve a forgiveness or not. The true meaning of forgiveness is letting it go because you can't change the past. You can change your perception on it. You can free yourself. Because if you're holding that grudge to the past there, you're still tied to that very same situation, which is like a repeater system continuing to carry on the aches and pain in your pain body. So you want to let that go. This eclipse will be perfect for it. So line them up in your mind, one after the other. Forgive all of them. Release them. You will feel how your body will start healing. You will have more energy. Your body will be receiving more oxygen. So it's a health thing, as much of it as it is a spiritual healing thing. And freeing up your, your crown chakra by doing so, by not carrying this black storm cloud. So that's what I want to say here at the end of the month. Very, very important. You can use this Aquarius, you know, to really kind of renew, revamp your life. I love this full moon eclipse. Why? Because it is staring it. It's in your 11th house for hopes and wishes and dreams. And, and it's like, how can we reach for, for that potential high when we're anchored down, we're being held back, you know, by karma. Forgiveness releases karma. You want to be free. And especially you, ruled by Uranus, you hate any kind of heavy dead weight. And you're the one teaching us all about letting go. So for you, I know you'll do a great job of it. You can so easily detach without feeling that emotional burden. But good for you. I will see you next month, Aquarius. Uh, thank you for all the, the feedback and emails and readings that I have been receiving from you. And I will see you next month in June. So go listen to your moon sign or rising sign and that of your significant other. And I will see you in June. Bye now.